Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halacha. And here's a brand new Halacha for us for Wednesday, the ninth day of April. Here we go. Today, some random uh, Seder facts that you'll need to know. Let's get right to them. You know that we told you about a week or two ago that it's a good idea to grate the horseradish or grind it up because if you tried to just take a bite of horseradish, it would be awful. So it is appropriate to grate your horseradish in advance. And we, of course, recommend that you do that before Yom Tov. However, this first halacha is for what do we do about the person who forgot to grate the mar, and now it's a Yom Tov time, and he realizes, oh, no, we didn't grate the mar. Is it permissible for him to grate the mar, or is it not? So the halacha is that if he grates it in a different manner than usual, then it's going to be allowed. What would be called a different manner of grating horseradish? Usually you would uh, slide it along the grater and have all the pieces fall onto a plate, a collecting bowl or something. So a way to do that in a differing way would be to grate and have the grating uh, pieces fall right onto the table. That would be different enough that it would allow you to do the grating and then you could just scoop up the pieces and put them on a plate afterwards and that would be the shinui. That would be the way of doing it different if you're stuck doing it on Yom Tov. Although we do recommend that you try to take care of this before. Next halacha. The zroa that's sitting on your Seder plate is a roasted um, wing or arm or some piece of a something like that and uh, it's roasted because it's symbolizing the carbon Pesach which is a roasted item. So if you didn't already know this you should be careful not to eat the zroa at the Seder because we don't eat any roasted meat at the Seder it would kind of give the implication that we're faking or trying to do a carbon Pesach and we don't like to cause confusion with things like that so don't eat the zroa at the um, at the Seder because it's roasted meat which we don't eat on Seder night. If you do, of course, not want it to go to waste because we don't like to have food go to waste, then by all means eat it on the second day of Yom Tov, let's say at lunch on the next day because that would be a perfectly appropriate use for it. Many people do not open bottle caps that are metal, if uh, if the wine bottle is all sealed, opening up a metal cap causes complications in halacha on Shabbos or Yom Tov. And therefore, if you do have wine bottles that are going to have metal caps, it would be a good idea, of course, to open them in advance of the Yom Tov. Just, you know, open the ones that you're pretty sure you're going to need over Yom Tov. And here's one that the ladies will like to hear, and that is that Gedolim, great rabbis, used to have the custom to, for the beauty of the Seder and for the honor of the Seder, they would personally, the man of the house, would set the table for the Seder to show that that's how important it is. So if you want to be a man and step up to the plate and be good like that, by all means, great rabbis used to do it, and you uh, might want to take up that cause and set the table for the honor of Yom Tov, especially for the Seder. And lastly, recommended size for the cup of wine at the Seder. Uh, there are differing opinions that range from everywhere, from as low as around three um, three fluid ounces. That would be almost exactly the size of a little bathroom cup, you know, those little cups. That would be the smallest size. Some rabbis actually say something up around five fluid ounces. And uh, the mid-range of what some rabbis suggest is something just about close to four ounces, four fluid ounces. So now you know that the range of what rabbis suggest for the minimum size of a Seder cup is somewhere between three to five approximately three to five fluid ounces. You might want to aim for somewhere in the middle. You don't necessarily have to drink the whole entire cup if you're having trouble, but that's at least how much your cup should hold, and then you should try to hopefully drink the majority of that cup. Thanks for logging on, and log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.